Welcome to another episode of Walnut Women. Um, today I have Meryl and Florence with me, and we are going to be talking about the topic if um, the local church needs female or women teachers. Um, so the context of this is Meryl, Flo, myself, and another um, woman, Eileen, we have been dedicated to host the Sunday Women's Bible Study in the English congregation. And this has been going on for the past two years when we started outdoors. And then for the past year, we were able to reserve a room in the Hope Center. And in the past two years, we were able to study several things. We studied in this order, Philippians, Ruth. We studied lots of women of the Bible who were known for their faith. We studied the book of Titus, and now this new fall, we just launched the Elijah study. And um, I wanted to bring this discussion up specifically because um, there hasn't been a women's class Bible study at this church um, for a long time. I don't, maybe for decades. And I think this kind of goes along the lines of... Um, teaching. We call this a Bible study, not a Sunday school class. But part of that was at the very beginning when I asked you guys, like, how do you want to be referred to as, and nobody wanted to be called like a teacher. <laughs> I think you guys didn't even want to be known as leaders. You said, call us facilitators. <laughs> but <laughs> um, it's been two years that we've taken we've um, taken our turns to be assigned to the passage and to teach for that day for that week I would say you guys we were all teaching and so first I want to talk about what is the spiritual gift of teaching because I do think that that gift does apply to what we're doing because we're studying God's word so can you guys help me define that what do you guys What's your conviction on this? Um, Wait, just to <clears throat> clarify, there was a woman Sunday school class when we had the bungalows. There was, but that was like over a decade ago, right? Wasn't it like... I don't know. It was Whatever long, the worst bungalows. It was like when you were in college. I feel like... <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that was a long yes. time ago, right? Yes. I, I don't remember that. Anyway. <laughs> You were probably in med school. <laughs> okay, so what is the spiritual gift of teaching? And do you think that God can bestow that gift to a woman? So I, I, I looked it up because I wanted to make sure, you know, that I had the, the proper definition. And there was a lot of different, I mean, very similar, but different ways. And so what I liked it was, the ability to properly interpret and effectively explain God's word to others, which then leads the student to discover and understand biblical truth and then obey it. Mm -hmm. um, so just, that's just the definition I came up with. And I think it's that, I think the, the gifting part is um, where it can really help someone understand um, the Bible better. And I think, mm -hmm. A lot of people can try to explain it, but some people really, I do think, just have that gift of mm -hmm. really explaining it in such a way that you're like, oh, you know, like you really, um, a light bulb goes off and you're really understanding it maybe in a way that you didn't see before. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good definition. That's a good starting point. So, based on that definition, then we would conclude that the um, the career of teaching in a secular environment does not equate the natural or the spiritual gift to teach God's word. Like just because you can teach outside of the church, it doesn't mean that your spiritual gift is the gift of teaching hmm. God's word. Because mm -hmm. I think the spiritual gifts have a very specific purpose of building the body up, right? So, right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add anything, Meryl? to the definition uh no I thought that was an awesome definition <laughs> do you guys do you guys think that women can have this gift yeah for sure okay so that's where <laughs> the next question comes 
um, because I think at our church setting, it's it's been kind of maybe sensitive for women to step up and say, oh, I want to teach a, I mm-hmm. want to teach a class. And then it's not even like we're a church that produces like female teachers of God's mm-hmm. word. So I feel like this Bible study was just like the four of us saying, hey, we want to study the Bible. Mm-hmm. But let's like include other people. Let's like open this to the church. And I don't think that at the beginning, you guys may necessarily have started this because you saw yourself with this gift. Maybe some of you mm-hmm. do. So like, how has your journey been um, with this commitment of teaching this class? Would you say you're teaching God's word? Would you consider yourself as someone who has this gift? So how does this apply to you personally and how you've been experiencing your role as a facilitator or a teacher? <laughs> you want to go slow? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, okay, I can go. I so I don't I don't consider myself as having the gift of teaching necessarily. Um, but I do think that um, we are called to teach God's word, and mm-hmm. my experience has been sometimes most of the time majority of the time when I'm when I'm assigned to teach a particular chapter I'm like learning as I go you Mm. know it's not like oh yeah I got this I can Mm. you know no I mean I need to like do my research and um and make sure that what I'm reading is from valid sources I actually I don't have a lot of access to like commentaries Mm-hmm. I was just thinking the other day, I was like, I know Preston used to have uh, access to the software system mm-hmm. that he paid a lot of money for a long time ago. And then I was like, <laughs> I should ask him if he still can access it because um, it would be helpful. But mm-hmm. um, but but what I do go through, it's like I'm, 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 I'm being a student myself, right? And so when I do go through it and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. You know, that's when I'm like, oh, I should write this down and, you know, mm-hmm. see what other people think when we're um discussing and that's why in many ways I see myself more as a facilitator because like I, it's not like I'm the professor and you know I'm like mm-hmm. imparting my wisdom to others it's mm-hmm. more like I, I get it I did a little bit more study research mm-hmm. beforehand yeah and so let's let's talk about this together as a group and encourage each other and learn together hmm. Hmm. well I don't think any of us really come with like extra knowledge per se I would say you you have to have some gift of teaching. Otherwise, I feel like, yeah, we it would never be complained. Clear. Yeah, we never we never came out of one of your teaching sessions like, oh, you you could have done better on this or that. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Maybe that would be the sign that it didn't work out for you. <laughs> like if yeah. we didn't feel the blessing of like listening and mm. digging into God's word, I I feel like it's. It's not like restricted to a certain method, you know, Mm. because I feel like from our sessions, I've gained spiritual truth and knowledge. And I, um, I thought it was pretty cool. Like, there were Mm. several of you guys to, you know, cycle through. So everyone brings something different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I think, uh, I guess this is also our time to affirm how we receive it. So I I would say in the times that you've taught, I was very blessed. And (laughs) I mean, who knows, maybe just on those like select days, you know, God's grace allowed you to do what you were able to do, even though you didn't feel maybe the confidence that you think one should possess as Mm -hmm. a gifted teacher. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so is it so is it something that you see yourself doing oh and just to clarify this women's bible study is for women of all ages at our church um, beginning from college all the way to no no limit um so it is yeah it is teaching peers is teaching some younger and some older women is this something you can see yourself doing consistently? 
Yes, you well, mean, right? <laughs> I like our format because we have our book, I feel like makes it really yeah. doable to teach through whether you're like confident or not confident. It's sort of like mm -hmm. holds your hand. Um, mm -hmm. I also feel like, like, by God's grace, there's a lot of people in our class who they themselves could probably teach. And mm -hmm. I feel like they added like a lot of good input and insight. So it really helps to like carry the class. So you don't feel like you're you're like giving a sermon or like a presentation where it's just right. yourself, right? You have like a lot of people to bounce ideas off of and to hear right. what they're um, learning and what they've learned in the past. And I think that's one of the big blessings of, I feel like this uh, women's Bible study just being, I think it's truly a place where you witness the whole intergenerations and um, just people of all ages coming together around the word of God and being able to, be blessed by it regardless of where they're coming from or what stage of life they're in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that's been really nice to to see and just like a blessing that has come forth from this ministry yeah I totally agree yeah we mm -hmm. have um, people of all ages all life stages and it is a place where a lot of newcomers come to check it out because it's one of the few things that is happening on campus on Sundays for, for women specifically. Mm -hmm. I also think it's nice that um, some people that often do themselves teach like on Sunday school or in children's worship or BSF or whatnot, mm -hmm. that they can just come and just sit, you know, and mm -hmm. um, be a part of the group and then, yeah, and give their input. And it's, it's really cool to, hear all their bible knowledge <laughs> like, <laughs> have them have fun with it um mm. but also i think it's um, hopefully it's for those who are new to christianity or new to the bible hopefully it's also something where they can um really learn about mm -hmm. the bible and seek truth and you know like gain truth from it Mm -hmm. um because it it oh sometimes some of the stuff that we cover is very it's actually very simple like some of the yeah. questions they're like okay what is um the three things that you know paul is saying we should da, 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 you know and it's it's just right there sometimes i'm like i'm silent because i'm like i feel like there should be more to this you know <laughs> but no, it's just very like straightforward and i think it's cool to very simply go through the text like that mm-hmm yeah, I think it makes God's word accessible. Like, even though not everyone might be blessed with, like, the gift of teaching or the gift of knowledge, like, every believer is called to, like, read God's word and come to an understanding. So I feel like it's it's a really nice way to practice reading God's word because a lot of times it's hard to read God's word by yourself, especially if you get stuck. So I feel mm -hmm. like it's a, a good, like, equipping time for people to learn how to maybe understand God's word on their own um or practice doing it if they're not comfortable doing so yeah all right we'll move on to you Meryl what's your experience been like and do you think you possess the gift of teaching mm. um, actually I want to just start off by saying in another podcast episode a long time ago I think you did say that teaching is one of your gifts it is. It's like one of my few gifts. <laughs> so, so I've, always, how so I've always, okay, here's interesting. Like I've always known that I have that gift, but like you said, it's really awkward to have that gift. I feel like, first of all, in the Asian culture church where women are already seen as like, oh, you have to have like a certain place or role. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time to be like in a conservative church where um, like we're not like egalitarian where we're more complementarian sometimes I feel like it gets sticky because people will feel like oh you're not in your place right mm -hmm. but I think I've always struggled in understanding like mm -hmm. what's the function of this gift right, but right. I always knew that like in terms of like studying the word or studying theology that's always something that's been like intriguing to mm -hmm. me. you know like and I would, and I would always, that's like how my faith really grew, you know, mm. when I started challenging myself intellectually. And so I love like that kind of stuff. But then I always struggled with like, well, what am I supposed to do with this? This is like the most, 
I remember always telling Hanley, like, this is the lamest gift to have as, like, a woman. And Don't to be a wife that. and have it is, like, a double whammy. <laughs> I was like, I feel like the only reason I have this gift is so that we can, like, banter about theological differences at home, you know? Um, so, I mean, it's nice to have a platform to sort of exercise the gift. And I really do feel like it's a gift because sometimes... I don't feel like I know what I'm doing, but mm -hmm. somehow like when I'm talking, it sort of all like clicks. And um, I really do feel like the spirit like empowers whatever is coming out of my mouth. Mm. Whereas for like other things, I'm not, I don't feel that as much. Mm. Right? So I feel like that's like a big part of gifting where you, you mm -hmm. really feel like it's not of your own doing, but it's like, mm -hmm by God's power so like people who have like the gift of faith or intercession or you know like the spirit is really moving them to exercise those gifts um so it's been fun like sometimes I do feel like oh man I gotta teach again and it's like hard right but I, I'm happy that I'm like not the only one and that we can like all sort of share the load and um yeah it's nice to have other people there like I said we're you can like bounce ideas off of or, or lean mm -hmm. against to like sort of help you. So would you say that it is not a given that if you have all this personal revelation during your personal study, that it will always translate through a person or like, does the person with that gift have to be able to do both? You know, like have it clear and, eye-opening personally but also to communicate it and deliver it I think if you have the gift of teaching because there's also like the gift of like knowledge right knowledge right, is listed right. as one of the spiritual gifts right but then it's like if the spiritual gifts are meant to like bless the body if you purely just have the gift of knowledge and you're just like receiving all this knowledge but yeah. not exercising it to bless the body then it's like what what good is it sort of thing um so I feel like often had those gifts sort of come together you know mm. where you if you have like a clear understanding you're and you're able to like communicate it well mm. then yeah so now that we've been doing this um pretty consistently two years strong would you say that you feel utilized in in this way to the church? Are you talking to me or are you talking yes, to me? Yes, yes, to you. <laughs> to me? Yeah. Um, what do you mean? I mean, um, it, it's it's fun to, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> what do you mean, Leslie? <laughs> because you, you said earlier that, like, you didn't know you you mm. called this the lame gift right because you didn't know how mm. it, it in function where you you would be where you could practice mm. it and you said in that last podcast that you didn't necessarily want to use it to teach children Remember? I mean I don't mind but yeah, it just right, also right. felt lame to say like you're, well, right. you're a woman and you have a gift of teaching so we need to stick you with the children right right <laughs> I don't know um I think as I get older, I sort of realize more the blessing of like having female teachers. Mm -hmm. I think growing up, I didn't understand as much like what was the need for that or like how that would look mm -hmm. like in a church. But I feel like now there's a lot more like women um, authors and teachers that are coming from like the same like conservative background who are exercising their gifts more on like maybe because of the internet or whatever, mm -hmm. it's just more public. So right. it's helpful to see how they're able to exercise their gift to like bless other women. Mm -hmm. And I feel like now there's a lot of resources for women to be like equipped, like whether it's like, I don't know, there's so many, there's so many ministries now, like just specifically for women. So I feel like, um, I feel like it's just like a different landscape right now than it was like, when I was right, growing right. up, you know? So, yeah. 
Well, I'm glad that you're teaching. Oh, so would you consider yourself a teacher now? Uh, <laughs> or a facilitator? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't, I guess, but I wouldn't be like, oh, I'm, I'm a teacher. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds weird. <laughs> But teacher I know Merrill. you're always calling me Teacher Merrill at the end of at the end of our Sunday school. Uh, yeah, I I mean, um, just being a, uh, just seeing how God has used you in this role, I think that it's very apparent that you have been given the ability to have this knowledge of God's word and to be very clear about it and like. I think even in like in the speech and the word choice, it's just like all, yeah, it's a, I have witnessed the spirit um, use you and I've been very blessed by it. Yeah. It's, it's really by God's grace. Like there's nothing else that I do where I, I can say like, Oh yeah, I, I feel like the spirit is working. No, <laughs> you should, that you're in your zone. <laughs> Everyone come come to the Bible study. No, <laughs> so funny. I mean, it's different, right? Teaching kids versus teaching adults. Like you can only. Some people are really gifted at teaching kids, though. All right. Um, I think the only thing I'll say about my experience is I definitely would not say I had have the gift of teaching. Um. I don't have the gift of knowledge. That's like one of my last gifts. Like I'm usually asking people the questions about the Bible. And um, so I think in preparing for those weeks that I'm assigned, I really feel inadequate and insecure. But I, I don't really want to say like I should excuse myself from not doing it just because I have those feelings. And I have like fear of man too, like, saying, oh, these people are the gifted ones. They should be doing it. So I, I have like all those thoughts when I'm like preparing. And I think um, something I've learned and probably grown into in this is just like in faith, I just know, well, if God has me here and wants to use me for those particular chapters, I'll just be faithful to go along with it and not worry about the results and not worry about like what people think about me. I think that's probably my biggest like hindrances. Like I care what people think about me because I don't feel confident in this skill. Um, and I think as I studied for my session, I'm like, oh, this is like so much work. Like it's not fun for me. Like it's it just it's just not how my brain is wired. But praise the Lord through the sessions. Um, I realized that I really don't know the Bible and I realized I need to learn how to study the Bible better. Um, I think the part about the teaching time that I enjoy is asking the good questions so that other people can say the stuff <laughs> I can't say. <laughs> Seriously, like when I have like the truths in my mind, I don't have the ability to like tell and instruct people this is what the verse says but in my mm. mind and my heart I have those convictions and that's why I know I don't have the gift but I still think that God can use me um even if I don't straight out have the gift I just trust okay I'll just be faithful and then I think the part that I care more about um rather than having big ahas is like here's the simple truth here's the the truth and then like how can we actually apply it like that's the part I, I tend to like to spend more time on hmm. um like yeah getting to the heart so that's been my experience I still would say I don't have the gift but maybe on those days when I um I'm a, assigned to lead and teach I think God can still use me if I'm available so I think that's what I've concluded well, I think people can be, like, gifted to, like, varying degrees, too, right? Like, it's not, yeah. like, a flat-out all-or-nothing. Yeah. I think I, it has, I go in with the assumption that it looks a certain way, you know? And I had this discussion with Darren. I, I was telling him on the side, uh, like, I don't know why I'm doing this. But then he's like, no, there's, like, other aspects of teaching. Like, it's not, yeah. like, like a 
what is it conveying information. a lecture I'm not yeah, a yeah, lecture yeah. type you know no but I feel like because you have like a, a education background like you do stuff where I'm like oh you can do that to like help people understand like I think like sometimes when you do certain things in class I'm like Oh yeah, that was a good idea. Like I never yeah, even thought about that. Yeah, but it doesn't have anything to do with the Bible. It's just no, uh, but it helps people to understand or connect. I think the nice thing about the format that we have is it's like not purely didactic, and so I feel like a lot of different gifts could be used, like from yeah. um whoever's like up there. Like it doesn't have to just be teaching, but I feel like there's a lot of also connection points. I feel like you know, um, yeah. Yeah, it's a good mix. Okay, so let's move on with the last part. Um, let's go back to answering that question. Does the local church need women teachers? And where are we at at, at CBC? Hmm. Or why do we need women teachers? And you kind of alluded to some of those thoughts. I think... Um... Sometimes, like, hearing something from a woman might be different than hearing it from, like, a guy. And sometimes I feel like females can speak into certain areas Definitely. of life better yeah. into another female um, just because of life experiences that, mm -hmm. that bind us together. Um, and I think it's important to see, like, all parts of, like, God's body moving, you know, and to understand it's, like, it's like everyone has access to, to God's word and can understand God's word and use God's word. And it's not just reserved for like a few holy people, like the Catholic mm -hmm. church sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's important for the life of the church. And um, yeah. Yeah, I agree with the the statement that like when you see another woman handle God's word and like mm -hmm. teach on it and instruct from it, it it's a little bit more accessible than seeing the pastors on Sunday. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, it's only reserved for mm -hmm. those people. But a woman who is, you know, maybe has her daily roles outside of the church, it just it carries a different authority also even in identity. I think you listen differently maybe mm. you um, know that sh she would understand you better already and she's addressing maybe certain struggles that are specific to women mm -hmm. and I mean I, I'm not complaining here but like you know our pastors they give they tend to give examples that are more like men specific you know like sports <laughs> okay maybe like there's some women too but there's like a lot of illustrations that are like geared for men but when you mm -hmm. hear women speak she'll bring different examples that are more mm. so related to like the roles of womanhood or even growing um towards like biblical womanhood I think she mm -hmm. can definitely carry more um authority to speak on those issues mm -hmm. I agree I think um when you hear a woman like teach and also, you know, share maybe their life experience or their own mm -hmm. personal um, experience with how the word applies to their life. Um, I think there's a, I guess there's a perspective and a gentleness to it that I mm -hmm. feel like we can relate to that. I mean, it wouldn't really be evoked the same way if, if a male mm -hmm. did that. Right. Um, I think I was, really blessed recently at the the women's tea when mm -hmm. Auntie Becky um granted I know a lot of it was like a testimony kind of thing mm -hmm. but but really just um hearing her teacher and, and and just her experience of kind of uh having to make sacrifices for mm -hmm. um her husband as, as he had to take on a lot of roles um within the church or within the you know the college where he was the president it was really mm -hmm. touching you know to hear her perspective mm -hmm. and see how God worked in her life in that way so I think mm -hmm. yeah it's just a, it just offers a different perspective mm -hmm. yeah. and I also think oh I, thought I was gonna say I also think that like it in the same way when it's like a women's bible study like this there's just a level of comfort 
yeah that you feel with each other right um, right in in our group that you might not get in a co-ed bible mm. study class that's for you sure might, yeah like there's yeah. yeah I just feel it just feels different when there's guys there right and exactly even there, like for yeah. sure my age like <laughs> it's just it's just different right <laughs> yes very different yeah, even like those times when we ha- would have our food and fellowship and we're just throwing out either mm. shallow or deep questions, like a lot of really deep personal struggles have come out of those mm. sharing times. And you definitely, I think it's in the safety of just being amongst like women fellowshipping together. I think like you kind of already go in um, maybe better like unarmed just because these you know that these women have a better chance of understanding Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's been a huge tremendous blessing of seeing like the spirit working through this time we've been learning god's word but it's also been a place for people to you know find refuge and share Mm -hmm. some of their more personal struggles Mm -hmm. um yeah i think this past year i appreciated um having nc becky as our tea speaker Mm. and I mean she is Pastor Albert's wife but I think hearing her example and her telling us like her journey of faith to the Lord and is different than if a man were to tell us a male leader or pastor were to tell us like you need to submit to your husbands you know (laughs) like it just comes with a different tone and weight and you feel like motivated differently because this is a woman who has tasted the struggles that we can identify with. And, you know, she can empathize with those related struggles and to see God's faithfulness. Yeah. It's very, it's wonderful. And then I also wanted to bring up earlier in the year, we had a, um, an event for the women in community. We had a kind of like a a small day workshop for holy sexuality and alice was our teacher for that day um so that was kind of nice too that we're slowly like putting the women of god to speak on behalf of god's word so i think it's all very Mm -hmm. encouraging and um i think when it comes to handling god's word and teaching it it really isn't restricted to people with the gift either I think Mm -hmm. that all women should make it their goal to be able to study God's word whether individually or with a group of people do it together so it's easier or take a class and there is I think every woman can teach it differently and there's her own spheres of influence in whom she can teach it to whether her children or other younger believers, or the youth. So I do think this is something we should not say it's limited to only pastors and people with the gift of teaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you guys have any other thoughts on this? I I think that um, we're all, I agree with what you're saying, Leslie. I think we're all... um, exhorted to teach God's word whether formally or informally like mm-hmm. we're all placed in different contexts and situations mm-hmm. where we have the opportunity to speak God's truth mm-hmm. um, into their lives right and it mm-hmm. it and th- these are more organic situations where mm-hmm. maybe a friend's going through something and mm-hmm. I think just speaking out those opportunities to um, speak truth into their lives is it should be something that we should consider a privilege and we should look out for you know those mm-hmm. those like little moments that we can do that mm-hmm. okay i guess this concludes our podcast we made good timing and thank you guys for joining me on this topic and hopefully um yeah the church can see that you know we're not like it's not like we've arrived i think we're still a work in progress trying to figure this out and um, being just faithful to what God has put right before us. So thank you. Okay.